Before we break this down, this isn't financial advice for your portfolio. It's my analysis for educational purposes. The Federal Reserve just revealed data showing warning signs that look eerily familiar to 2008. Today, we're breaking down the four critical indicators that have analysts worried and the three key reasons why this time is fundamentally different. Let's look at the data. Credit card delinquencies hit 6.93%, while household debt reached $18.39 trillion. But household net worth also jumped to $176.3 trillion, up $7.1 trillion quarterly. These numbers tell a story, and if you understand what's happening, you can position yourself accordingly. First warning sign, consumer debt concentration. In 2008, mortgage problems spread everywhere. Rich, poor, everyone got hit. Today's debt crisis is different. Credit card debt reached $1.21 trillion. The delinquency rate of 6.93% means nearly 7 out of 100 accounts are behind on payment. But this isn't happening equally across America. Alaska residents carry $8,077 in average credit card debt. Kansas residents carry $5,329. That's a 52% difference between states. Generation X carries the highest average balance at $9,000. $557. Other generations carry significantly less. This demographic concentration didn't exist before 2008. Credit card rates now exceed 20%. Auto loan delinquencies reach 2%. Student loan serious delinquencies, those 90 plus days behind, hit 10.2%. The pattern is clear. Specific groups in specific places are struggling. The question is whether this stays contained or spreads like 2008. Current delinquencies concentrate among lower income borrowers and weaker credit profiles. In 2008, problems eventually spread across all income levels. Second warning sign, government fiscal limits. In 2008, the government had fiscal space to respond. They spent trillions on bank bailouts, stimulus programs, and emergency lending. That that capacity doesn't exist today. The federal budget deficit runs at 6.4% of GDP in 2025. The government borrows money during what should be strong economic time. When the next downturn hits, response options will be limited. This creates a fundamental difference from 2008. Back then, unlimited government intervention was possible. Today, fiscal constraints limit traditional crisis response tools. Federal debt has already reached levels that restrict emergency spending capacity. Previous crisis responses assumed government could spend without limit. That assumption no longer holds. The safety net that existed in 2008 has been used up during subsequent economic challenges. What happens when the next crisis requires government intervention? Third warning sign, credit system changes. Banking regulations transformed after 2008. Banks now maintain higher capital reserves, undergo regular stress testing, and face stricter lending oversight. This creates both strengths and potential complications. Multiple debt categories show rising delinquencies simultaneously. Student loans at 10.2% serious delinquency rates, credit cards at 6.93%, auto loans at 2%. In 2008, this pattern would have signaled immediate banking system failure. Today's banking system can handle higher delinquency rates without collapsing. Regulatory improvements provide resilience that didn't exist in 2008. Banks maintain capital buffers specifically designed to absorb credit losses. However, tightened lending standards since 2022 mean credit access becomes restricted quickly when problems emerge. This could amplify economic slowdowns, even if banks remain stable. The St. Louis Federal Reserve notes, current labor market strength is significantly stronger than during the financial crisis. Employment provides income support that wasn't present in 2008. But employment strength during early crisis stages doesn't guarantee continued stability. The 2008 crisis also began during relatively strong employment conditions. Fourth warning sign, policy confidence, policy Policymaker confidence levels mirror 2007 pattern. Officials discuss soft landings and controlled economic adjustments, despite mixed economic signals. The 2008 recession saw GDP fall 4.3% and unemployment rise from under 5% to 10%. Millions lost homes, jobs, and retirement savings. Yet policy communications today echo the optimism that preceded that crisis. Economic history shows high policy confidence often precedes major economic transition. Current officials express certainty about managing economic challenges despite rising delinquencies across multiple debt categories.
categories. This confidence exists alongside concerning economic indicators, rising delinquencies, high interest rates, concentrated debt problems, and fiscal constraints create complex challenges. Maybe current policy tools and economic understanding can prevent 2008-style outcomes. Banking system improvements and employment strength provide genuine advantages over 2008 conditions. But the confidence itself, the certainty that this time will be different, mirrors exactly what we heard before previous crises. What institutions are doing. Institutional investors aren't panicking, but they're adjusting positions based on current economic realities. Their moves reflect understanding of both risks and opportunity. Cash positions have increased across institutional portfolios, not because cash provides strong returns, but because liquidity creates flexibility during uncertain periods. Debt exposure is being evaluated more carefully. If delinquent rise during strong employment conditions, what happens when economic conditions weaken? Focus has shifted toward quality investments with strong fundamental. Companies with consistent cash flows, reasonable valuations, and solid balance sheets receive preference over speculative positions. The institutional approach recognizes that economic transitions redistribute wealth rather than destroying it. Those who understand the patterns can position accordingly. Current conditions show both risks and opportunity. Rising delinquencies suggest caution, but concentrated problems and banking system strength suggest different outcomes than 2008. Four warning signs are flashing. Concentrated debt problems, fiscal constraint, banking system changes, and policy confidence. These mirror aspects of 2008 while showing important differences. Key numbers, 18.39 trillion household debt, 6.93% credit card delinquencies, 10.2% serious student loan delinquencies, 20% plus credit card rate, but also $176.3 trillion household net worth, up $7.1 trillion quarterly. Regional variations show Alaska at $8,070 average credit card debt versus Kansas at $5,329. Generation X carries $9,557 average balances. Problems concentrate rather than spread broadly like 2008. Banking system regulatory improvements provide resilience that didn't exist in 2008. Employment strength offers income support that was absent during the financial crisis. The question isn't whether problems exist. They do. The question is whether they stay contained or spread systematically like 2008. 2008. Understanding these patterns helps inform financial decisions during uncertain economic periods. Both risks and strengths exist simultaneously. The data tells a story about economic conditions that share similarities with 2008 while showing crucial differences. Smart money pays attention to both aspects.